Did you know you can 3D track 3D objects inside of After Effects to create amazing effects just like this and this and this. And the best part is it's super easy to do. Come on, I'll show you. I'll use this shop for the tutorial. I'll teach you how to import, track, and composite 3D objects. Once your shot is set up, it's easy to swap through different 3D models. To create that hologram effect at the beginning of the video, I just followed all the same steps I'm gonna show you, but I use the Crates Hologram plugin, which is part of the LaForge plugin suite. There are tons of amazing plugins in this collection. If you wanna check it out, look for a link in the description below. I've got my shot imported into After Effects. We made sure to keep the ground in frame, which will help us when tracking in our elements. There's also a good amount of stable camera movement, which is gonna help with our track. I'll right click on my footage layer and go to track and stabilize and select track camera. This will start the camera tracking process. Once that's done, I can see these colorful X shapes. I'll increase the size of these so you can see them a little bit better. These represent tracking points. If I hover my mouse over them, you can see a 3D target pops up. I can use just three points or I can select a bunch in an area that I want my 3D scene to be centered around. Make sure your tracking target looks flat to the surface you want your objects to be on. Then I could just right click and select set ground plane and origin, which will make this area the center of my 3D scene. Then I can right click and select create a solid and camera. The 3D solid will be positioned at zero, zero, zero or dead center in my 3D scene, which is super helpful when adding 3D elements. After Effects can import 3D files called GLBs. They can import OBJs as well, but GLBs are so much better. These are great 3D files that have textures and sometimes even animations baked in. You can find them on most 3D stock sites like rendercrate.com, but I tend to just use the rendercrate plugin for After Effects, which lets me browse the library and import 3D models directly into my composition. For this tutorial, I'll delete the 3D model from my composition and I will just drag it in from my project window to see some more options. When you drag and drop a GLB into your After Effects comp, you'll get this useful pop-up. I always select make comp size and I make sure do not affect position is also selected. You can also go to the advanced tab to see some options for scaling and axis settings. I'll hit okay and just scale my 3D car up. The red solid is gonna be my shadow catcher, so it needs to be a lot bigger. I'll go ahead and increase the scale of it. I need my car to be sitting exactly on the ground plane. Jumping into the front camera view is super helpful when lining up. Use the hotkey C to jump through different camera control options. You can zoom and move around your composition. Don't worry, this is not going to affect your main camera if you are in a different view. Since my car's axis center is at the bottom center of the model, I could really just zero out the position and it's gonna be lined up perfectly with the ground plane origin we set before. But many models have the axis at the center of the model instead of at the bottom. This means if you scale the model up, it's gonna go through the ground instead of staying on top of it. You can use the hockey Y to move the axis or the anchor point to the bottom of the model. Then you can hit the hockey V to bring up your selection tool and reposition your model to sit perfectly on the ground. Then you can scale your model and you'll see that it's gonna stay exactly on top of your ground, just like you need it to. I'll jump back into my active camera so we can work on the next part of this shot. But before I show you some of the awesome lighting techniques that After Effects now has, I wanted to mention our latest After Effects and Premiere plugin, Hyperglitch. This plugin is part of the LaForge suite and it is the greatest glitch plugin ever. There's also the Hyperglitch transition plugin, which I used with just the default settings in this sequence. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. We have our 3D object tracked in, but we need better lighting and shadows. To do this, go to layer, new light, and we need an environment light for 3D objects. Make sure casts shadow is checked on and hit okay. If your shadows aren't showing up or they look low quality, go to the advanced settings and select render options. I always select fit to scene here, 
You can increase the resolution of your shadows and increase the render quality. I bumped mine up to double resolution and the render quality to 32. But if this slows down your system too much, keep these settings low and just increase them when you are ready to render out your final shot so it doesn't bog down your workflow. From here, I just hit OK. We can see that now we've added a shadow, but we still see that solid layer of the ground plane. If I toggle down the material options arrow of this solid layer, I can change the accept shadows from on to only, which will just keep the shadow portion of this layer. OK, we're making good headway here, but the lighting still looks a bit off. The environment light in After Effects is basically a big sunlight, but the coolest part about it is that we can use HDRIs with this. HDRIs are basically high dynamic range spherical images, which will give you far more realistic results. Ambient CG is a great source for HDRIs, as well as Polyhaven. Look for HDRIs that match your scene. The most important part is to make sure that your sun or whatever your light source is, is roughly the same. For example, my footage was shot on a clear, no cloudy day, so one of these cloudy HDRIs is not going to work very well. This is a great option for me. It's a similar environment, and the sun is about the same height from the horizon as it was when we shot our base footage. And you can always shoot your own HDRI too if you want to. You can use the mobile app like HDRI, or you can even use a 360 camera. I've imported my HDRI into After Effects, and I'll just drag and drop it into my composition at the bottom of my layer stack. I need to tell my environment light to use the HDRI, so I'll select it and toggle down the arrow for light options and change the source from default to that HDRI layer that I imported. Instantly, we can see some great results in the lighting and reflections of my car. We got lucky here with that light angle as well. It looks almost perfect, but we can get better results by moving the HDRI around to better match the shadow directions in my footage. I'll hit R to bring up the rotation and mess with the X and Y rotation of my environment light until my car shadow matches the scene shadows better. The shadow color itself is a little bit off, but I can easily fix this by toggling down my ground layer material options and using the eyedropper tool by shadow color to select some shadows in my scene until the car shadow looks realistic. If you want to change the position of your 3D asset, make sure to just change the X and the Z position. We don't want to move it up or down on the Y position. If we do that, it's not going to look like it's sticking to the ground anymore. A little motion blur goes a long way. I'll pre-compose all my layers together except my footage background layer, and I will name this new composition car. Then I can add the effect pixel motion blur. Now this is a slow plugin, so you can disable it while you work and then just re-enable it when you are ready to export. My car is looking a little too sharp. I can add some Gaussian blur before my pixel motion blur effect to just soften it up a little bit better to better match my footage. If you want to add depth of field camera blur to your shot, it's easy to do. Just use the 3D channel extract effect and play with the black point to see your depth map. Here I can duplicate my car layer and I'll delete the 3D channel extract from that duplicate. So I have one normal layer of the car and one layer with the 3D channel extract effect, which I'm going to call depth. I can add an adjustment layer into my scene and disable the visibility of my depth layer. Then I can go to the effects and presets panel and throw on the camera lens blur effect. And then I can use that depth composition as the input. I'm going to go where it says source and I'm going to change that to effects and masks. You can always go back and adjust the 3D channel extract parameters on your depth map layer. You can also use the camera lens blur effect on that adjustment layer to increase the blurriness or invert the blur map. Now, I want to go further into this in a future tutorial. Please let me know in the comments below if you want more 3D content like this in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. And remember to make it awesome.